So we're working in a statistics unit, and one of the things that can help you is your friend Uncle Desmos. This Desmos graphing screen uh, can also do a bunch of other things to help you with statistics. So the subject of this quick video is going to be the five number summary. However, you should have already or soon learned how to use Desmos to find the mean, median, correlation, coefficient, and line of best fit. Let's concentrate on the five number summary right now. So over here in a Desmos screen, I've entered a list of data. This list of data represents the number of absences for different students in the school year. So this student was absent three times during the year. This student was absent 13 times. Oh boy, this guy was absent 78 times. So in case you need to remember how to enter into a list into Desmos, here's a quick look. I'm going to scroll to a new, uh, new rectangle in Desmos, but you could just use any rectangle you want. And so I'm in here. This is where I would normally enter an equation. But if I just go to the plus and choose a table, now I can start entering things in the X. So I'll put a 5 in there. If I hit tab, it would ask me for a Y value, but in this case, I don't need a Y value. I just want a list that represents how many Pop-Tarts you've eaten in the last week. And I can just keep entering in that list. So in this case, one student ate five Pop-Tarts, one student ate no Pop-Tarts. That's sad. So that's how you put data into a table or into a list on Desmos. I'm going to delete this one. And I'm going to go back up to my regular list. So now with this list of data, you could do things like find the mean or the median. So I'm going to scroll down to a new rectangle again, and I could just type in mean parentheses. And then I have to do an X1 or X sub 1. I can't just write X, and that's because the list of data that I care about is in list X sub 1. And now I find out that the mean of my data is 9.444. You probably already knew how to do that. Well, let's take a look and find the median. So in a new rectangle, I say median of x1. And that's 4.5. That means the middlemost data piece, the median, is 4.5. Or in other words, about 50% of the students were absent more frequently than four and a half times a year, and about 50% of the students were absent less frequently than that. Notice that the mean and the median are quite different, even though they're both kind of representing the center of the list of data. And as you have figured out from a lesson earlier or a lesson coming up, the mean is influenced by outliers, and this big outlier of 78 has made the mean artificially high compared to the median. If I took that 78 out of there and just called it an 8, you would notice that the mean and the median are pretty close to each other. I'm putting it back to a 78. All right, so that's probably all old news for you. I'm going to delete those out. And we're now going to do this thing called the five number summary, which you're going to use when you make a box plot. And here's the quickest way to do it. If I just type in stats and then parentheses x sub 1, I get these five numbers. These five numbers tell me the minimum or the lowest data piece on that list. So some student was absent zero times. The max, the highest data piece on that list, which is a 78. The median, which is the middlemost data piece. And then the Q1 and Q3, which stands for quartile 1 and quartile 3. And what this Q1 of 2 means is 25% of the students... Well, let me rephrase that. This might make it a little bit more understandable, but um, if this is still confusing, once you go through your five-number summary, you will understand this even better. But the Q2, or the second quartile, means it's the 25th percentile, which means that data piece is greater than 25% of all the data in the list. So if I go to my list here, oops, that was supposed to say Q1. Okay, sorry. Q1 
or the first quartile, represents the 25th percentile, and here's what that means. My Q1 of 2 means 25% of the students were absent two days or less. My Q3 is the 75th percentile, which means that's greater than 75% of the data. So the number 9 is my third quartile, and that means 75% of the students have nine or fewer absences. So the quartiles measure the 25th percentile and the 75th percentile. That'll become more clear as you do the box plots. But the main point is, make sure you can enter your data into a list, and make sure you can use stats x sub 1 to get the five number summary, and from there you can make your box plot.